So, hello there, and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanya Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over another revision of Swift Databases. This is going to be Swift Databases Part 1.2, and so I'm just adding a little teensy addition, which makes our code much better and much more easy to understand. Although, it does require us to add an entirely new library, it still works for our code. Anyway. Let's get to it. This time we're using the Alamofire framework. Uh, so again, this was suggested to me by someone called Amrit, uh, and so he had a project in which he had to use Alamofire, uh, so I decided to create it, uh, and now I'm also going to be creating a YouTube video on it. This is going to be one of my uh, newer Swift 1 videos, so that's going to be in the description. However, if you want a Swift 2 version, just mail me and I will give you a Swift 2 version. Anyway, let's get back on to our app. Now let's just see how our older Swift databases versions used to work. So as you can see here, uh, we have our database on one end. We have our PHP in the middle. And then we have our Swift. Now I'm only going to be talking about get in from the database not giving to the database. So Swift wants to retrieve every single thing from this database. Then what are we going to do? Basically, Swift will contact PHP with that get request. PHP will contact the database. The database will head over, give it to PHP. The PHP will give it to us in JSON format. No, not JSON. Anyway. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Okay, so that's actually supposed to be JSON. Okay, so now basically Swift will contact our PHP. PHP sends the request along to the database. The database sends it back to PHP. The PHP sends it back to us in JSON format. Pretty simple. But let's see how this code is. Okay, so the code in this case would be pretty long. It would be uh, an average around um, four to five lines. Uh, and then if you were to take into account Swift 2, it would be around five to six lines of code. And why use these many lines of code when you can just do around, oh, I don't know, uh, one to two lines of code, not including the completion handler. Uh, and just uh, one last thing, sorry, forgot to mention that here. We are also using Swifty JSON. Okay, that's another API that we're using. So yeah, although Alamofire is our main framework, we're just using uh, Swifty JSON. Sorry, Swifty JSON, uh, in order to take our JSON uh, and properly parse it so that we don't need to do the manual stuff. Okay, so basically we're taking four to five lines of code and we're reducing it to one to two lines of code. And so let me just explain how this newer version will work. Basically, in the middle here, we have a lamo fire, and I'm just going to call it AF for short. Then over here, we have Swifty JSON, which I'm going to call SJ. Okay. I'm also going to remove this because we don't need that anymore. Okay. So now we have SJ and AF, called Swifty JSON and lamo fire. Then over here, we have our PHP and our DB. Okay, so now we have our Swift end. Perfect. So as you can see, what was what's going to happen is when Swift wants to again get from our database over there, then Swift will contact a Lamo fire. Okay, a Lamo fire will go to our PHP end. The PHP will contact the database. The database will contact our PHP. The PHP will contact the Lamo fire, give it JSON. Uh, the Lamo fire will contact us. We contact Swifty JSON. It gives us the result. And then we get our final result through this transaction here. Although this does seem much more complicated than this, let me just tell you, this is all we have to do. After this border, this is all automatic. This is not our code anymore. Because Swifty JSON, that's an API. Alamofire, that's an API. PHP, we code it once, it's done, we don't ever need to touch it again. 
db, we call, again, we just set it once or we give it some values. That's already going to be there no matter what. And then, this is all we're taking care of, which is getting back from the Lamo fire, giving to Swifty JSON, uh, and also sending to the PHP. That's all we have to take care of, and then everything else takes care gets taken care of by itself. So that's how Swifty JSON and Lamo fire will make our lives easier. So uh, now let's get into the Mac part, and where I'll show you a demo, and I'll also run through the code with you. Let's get to it. So welcome back to the Mac part of the video, and now we're going to be looking, uh, taking a look at the source code, and then I'll be showing you a little demo. Or actually, let's skip that part, and let's get straight to the demo, then the code. So as you can see, this might take a little while to load, uh, because I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe uh, the server's a little bit... Okay, perfect. Uh, it loads quite, pretty quickly, uh, and as you can see, it downloads every uh, entry from the database, uh, and we are able to see uh, every person, their image, their ID, and their age. Okay, now that that's done, let's take a look at the source code. So as you can see here, we have also imported uh, the Lamofire framework, and we have also taken the Swifty JSON auxiliary um, uh, class so that we can actually use it. Okay, coming back to our view controller class. View controller class conforms to UI view controller, UI table view data source, and UI table view delegate. Of course, it will be very helpful for you, and it would make much more sense if you were to watch the other videos before watching this one, but I will still explain all the code in detail. If you don't want to see the final parts where I explain uh, um, the majority, you can just skip that because that'll be the last part. Anyway, continuing. Uh, here we have an IB outlet variable, uh, and so this is our table view of type UI table view. Well, this is the table view that will contain all of our entries. Then we have our data as an NS array, which is a blank array, which will contain all of our entries themselves. In our view did load, we are just printing our data for uh, debugging purposes. After that, uh, in view did appear, uh, this is one of those uh, workaroundy functions because uh, I couldn't really get. Okay, this is really weird. Maybe it's a glitch for the Lambo fire. Maybe I'm not just I'm just not using it right because whenever I was to see anyone using a Lambo fire in a function, it would completely work for them. However, if I were to try to do it in a function, any sort of function, it just wouldn't work. It refused to execute anything that I were to give it. So what I did is if I tried putting the block in the view did appear function, and for some reason it worked. Then I moved the exact same block back to my date of JSON function. Didn't work. I moved it back in time view did appear. It worked. So I found out that whenever I would put this block in the view did appear function, for some reason it would work. So apparently what I've done is I've put in the Alamofire request code inside of my view did appear function. And so uh, what happens is whenever I want to actually get data, from the reload function or anything, I just call view did appear. Now, naturally, when view uh, when it when it calls view did appear, it will not set animated to uh, animated to true, meaning animated will be false because it takes that as a boolean. So then, uh, inside of here, inside of my Lamify request, which I'll explain in just a second, uh, I'll get to that in a minute. First, let's explain the beginning code. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, I'm doing a lamofire.request. I'm doing a dot get request uh, from the uh, the PHP API uh, that uh, Amrit is allowing me to use. Then uh, I'm getting the response to JSON, and I'm taking for the completion handler uh, the variables request response the JSON value with an underscore because that's the name of the class as well, uh, and also an error if there is any. And then I'm setting in to start that completion handler, and then we're checking if there's a, a value in JSON, then put it into the final variable. Then if, oh sorry, if we can convert this final uh, NS data into a, J a Swifty JSON uh, class, and we can get its dictionary object, then s give that into the final two variable. If we can do all of that, then set self.data to final2, which is our dictionary that we just got. Uh, we want to get the specific key called result from the, N from the JSON, uh, and we want to convert this to an array. Once that's done, we want to check if we're not animated. What this means is if this is false, uh, if animated is false, which it is, 
Then self.reload. What this is going to do is it's going to come here. It's going to call view to appear with a true, meaning it'll come here. However, it will not execute this again, meaning it won't become an internal loop of functions. And then it will also reload the table views data. So that's how that works. And so that's basically how our view to appear workaround works. Next, we have our table view function. This is just inherited uh, from UI table view data source. Uh, and so basically, we are using the number of rows in section function, and we're just returning data.count. And over here, we have our cell for row at index path function, uh, which will allow us to create a cell as a new additional info cell. Uh, and so this is uh, a custom uh, UI table view cell that I've created. Then we're setting the main data to the data's index path dot row as an MS dictionary. So basically, we're getting each sort of um, uh, index of the JSON uh, at wherever we are in the uh, table view. So for example, here we would get 0, here we would get 1, here we would get 2, 3, 4, and then 5. So that's how that works. Next, we are getting, uh, we're setting uh, the cell's name.text to the name from the JSON, and we are forcing this as a downcast to string. Then we're doing the same thing for the user ID, except for as an integer. Then we're doing the same thing for the age, except as a string. Well, this is going into a variable, sorry. So these are all variables. Uh, uh, and so we're getting the user ID, which is the ID from the JSON. We're getting the age, which is the age from the JSON. We're getting the image URL, which is, an, which is the URL where we should get the image from uh, as a string. And then we're also getting the actual UI image, which is equal to UI image uh, with data which is NS data, contents of URL, an NS URL, string, which is the image URL, force uh, unwrap the NS URL, force unwrap the NS data, because I know that's going to be there no matter what. And then finally, we're done the UI image. After that, we're setting the image views image to that image. Uh, and we are setting info's text to the ID of the user ID we just got. And then we are creating a new line, the age, the age that we just got. Then we are just returning the cell that is complete with that juicy information. And then we can just fix that formatting issue there. Anyway. And yeah, that was the explanation of the code. Let's just see the app in action one last time so that you can really understand how this works. As you can see in just a second here, we should get all the entries in our table view and we should be able to scroll through them. There we are. It fills up our table view and that's really it for this video. And so yes, you can always email me at tajimani at gmail.com if you have any questions or suggestions. You can even leave a comment down below. And if you like my content and you want to see more of it, please subscribe to my channel. Also like the video if you liked it. Uh, and that'll be it. Goodbye.